My name is Alex Little. I work at the Centre for Nanoscale Science and Technology at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And uh, in our nano centre, we do uh, a very wide variety of things concerned with uh, nanofabrication, nanotechnology in all its aspects, ranging from uh, environmental TEM to nanophotonics to metamaterials to future computing. The ability to measure things to the required degree of accuracy and precision uh, starts to provide you with the information necessary to get the kinds of insights that you need in order to be able to understand what kinds of questions are worth asking about what you're doing. You know, at the most fundamental level, we're always looking to see what on earth is going on at the nanoscale, uh, perhaps more closely related to the sort of the uh, integrated circuit and computing uh, end of things. Um, the industry is interested in uh, neuromorphic computing systems which frequently involve some novel kind of uh, non-volatile memory um, which can uh, involve the formation of metallic filaments in a material or um, you know sort of uh, strings and clusters of vacancies and so on. Uh, in already very small devices but we're now talking about the movement of individual atoms and ions we probably need to use quite a broad combination of different measurement techniques to allow us to see the structure at the atomic scale um, and not just collections of atoms but sort of individual atomic defects and then to validate that those high resolution images which we hope are telling us something about fundamental mechanisms are actually representative of what's going on in the device when we're not looking at it. So it's not really a you know Schrodinger's cat type problem, but it has that sort of flavor. Um, you know, we have the tools to see these things at really tiny length scales, but when you start going in that direction, you have to be very careful that you're not perturbing the system. Perhaps on a um, you know slightly less dramatic level. When we look at resist materials in the CD SEM, it's a polymer material being bombarded by reasonably high energy electrons. We know the resist features shrink. Um, so, you know, what you looked at in the first scan is different by the time you get to the tenth scan, say. So, understanding exactly what goes on there and trying to validate that measurement through some alternative approach so that. You know, even if you know what you're doing is not perfectly accurate, you at least understand the source of any inaccuracy. And that's probably enough because typically you're looking for repeatability um, more than absolute accuracy. So if you look at the kinds of device structures that people are building now, the FinFETs and so on, they're really very three-dimensional. You've got you know, a channel with wraparound gates and so on. So it's a three-dimensional structure. Most of the um, production metrology tools are um, 2D in nature in the sense that if you use a CD SEM or something like that, you're looking down on the top of the object. It's possible to extract some information about sort of sidewall slope and that kind of thing, and some of my colleagues in other parts of NIST are doing a really nice job of that. But it's really a very complicated problem. It requires some really sophisticated modeling to get at that. And there's kind of a, a lack of a, a, a ground truth object to look at. Um, so what we would like to do is um, use the techniques of TEM tomography, which um, we've been using to look at some of the directed self-assembly uh, problems, to look at um, you know, test structures that look like FinFETs, for example, map those in 3D to you know, roughly the one nanometer uh, resolution uh, type scale, and then take those very same structures, put it into a CD SEM, maybe even into a scatterometry system, and then start to compare the results and try and understand how to get the most out of the high throughput you know, 2D and scatterometry type measurements um, but based off that, as close as we can get to a ground truth with, uh, with TM tomography. There's, a, there's an old saying, when needs must, the devil drives. So when you really have to do something, uh, people tend to get pretty creative. Um, in the semiconductor industry in particular, you know, you've got the diminishing feature sizes, a huge expansion in the number of materials used, the 
structures that are becoming, even at the lowest level, highly three-dimensional. Um, so that's pushing people to be creative and search for a lot of, a lot of new techniques. And then uh, in our center in particular, and, and in the industry in general, obviously, um, we spend a lot of time building new kinds of instrument. Um, you know, it's one thing to sit there and say, well, in principle, I ought to be able to do this measurement. And very different in practice to say, okay, you know, now we need to build a tool that can do that. And I think, you know, if you're in metrology and if you're pushing the limits, you will be building some new piece of instrumentation at some point.